Yo, what is up, internet friends? Hope you're having a wonderful day. As you know, I am a big fan of Carl Jung, and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite Carl Jung books. I don't know if it's my personal favorite. Um, I would have to say that's one of uh, the books in his more rigorous psychoanalytical, uh, his more rigorous psychoanalytical corpus of works that's... Um, the Collective Unconscious, The Ego and Its Relation to the Unconscious, Volume 9 or 7 in his 20-volume set, which was now written for the mass public, um, but this was written for the mass public, and that is Modern Man in Search of a Soul. This, I would say, is his most accessible work. It is very light on analytical terminology, like imagos and religious phrases and words because he's very uh, prone to analyzing very kind of dense and almost esoteric religious texts and extracting the psychological meaning of symbols, symbology, myth mythological symbols and pictures and lines of thought in religious thinking from yonder year, yesteryear. But this is very light on the typical stuff that makes Jung such a juggernaut. It was definitely written for a mass audience, and I don't mean that as a bad thing. It's very digestible, very palatable for the brain, and it is a very good read, a very, very good read, because it perfectly respects the role of the psyche in everyday life, and the sort of malaise that we have all come to experience through the advent of modernization and how we are supposed to continue our meaning making jobs in the world. How do we find meaning in a world that is increasingly nihilistic, that is just becoming, you know, definitions don't exist anymore. We are overrun with technology. Materialism is rampant. We need some sort of guiding philosophy and Jung in this book posits that like he posits everywhere. It has to do with the religious, what he would call the religious faculty, those aren't necessarily his words, but he really believed that there was a religious module of sorts that's tucked away deep in our unconscious mind and that manifests in the collective unconscious, which manifests in literature, in art, in paintings, in, in novels, and so forth. The first two chapters are about dream analysis, and I would say those are the hardest to get through. That's like the, uh, that's like the if you can get through these two chapters, you're in the clear, because the rest of it is pretty easy reading as far as Jung goes, but nothing with Jung is ever entirely easy. But those are the hardest, I would say, the, the dream analysis chapters. Especially if you are not used to discussions about dream analysis, and the world of dreams just seems so strange and foreign to you. But I think it's worth reading, because he will articulate exactly why well, why he thinks it is that we dream and the purposes of dreams and what the role of the um, analytical psychologist serves in the uh, work of analyzing dreams. But a really good book on dream analysis, if you are interested in that, is Freud's Analysis of Dreams, uh, Interpretation of Dreams, which I have not read. So those are the hardest chapters of the book. The rest is Problems of Psychotherapy, uh, aims of psychotherapy. So, and again, just because he's talking about psychotherapy here, it's very light on terminology. So anybody can read it and enjoy it. A theory of types, which is about psychological personality traits, if I remember correctly. Uh, the stages of life, which was my favorite chapter in this entire book, the stages of life. It has to do with the psychological differences between the what he would call like the the e the morning of life, uh, which was childhood, and then the zenith of life, which is middle age. That's and he's using the metaphor of a sunset, the the sun cycle up in the sky, sunrise and sunset, and then blah blah blah, psychology and literature, which I am rereading right now. Actually, an archaic man. Those are those three chapters: stages of life, archaic man, and psychology and literature were my absolute favorites of this book. I finished reading Stages of Life and I was like, man, that was just one of the best things I have ever read, ever. It was such a cool read. Just to hear him articulate these things is really something else. Analytical psychology also in there, which he explains is 
philosophy of um, the study of analytical psychology. And the spiritual problem in modern man is also definitely one of my favorites, which is pretty much what this entire book is about. How are we supposed to make meaning in our lives in the advent of technological progress and political polarization and just all of the problems we've been dealing with in modern society. And he wrote this in the 1950s and no, I'm sorry, this was first published in English in 1933. So almost a hundred years ago, not quite, but the thing with Jung is that he is such a universal thinker that pretty much everything he wrote about, I think will still be relevant 200 years from now, 300 years from now, 400 years from now, unless there's some really weird, like, Evangelion-esque fundamental shift in our psyche, like, the human instrumentality project happens and Gendo has this way with, um, Ikari, whatever her name was, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But what do I know? But anyways, yeah, no, uh, psychotherapists or clergy, which is his articulation of the uh, argument between psychoanalysis's role juxtaposed to the role of the religious church and psychotherapy's sort of usurpation of the church itself, trying to take back what the church has failed to do for people for so long, in his view, um, the, the religious dogmas of the church and his counter-arguments and arguments about that whole debate there, which is really interesting. Uh, and that is it. That is all that this book entails. But yeah, no, this is, whenever people ask me, like, what's the book to read when I'm new to Carl Jung, I recommend them this. I don't recommend them the book that I started off with, which was um, The Ego and Its Relation to the Unconscious, volume nine. Again, I forget which volume it is. I have it up in my room, it's just not with me. I started off with that one and I really enjoyed it, but it was a very difficult read because I was completely new to Jung's writings. I mean, I had heard Jordan Peterson talk about him a lot. So I knew the themes to expect, but I didn't, um, I wasn't prepared to encounter the, uh, the terminology, I would say, is the hardest part of Jung. But once you understand the terminology, then it's not like it becomes any easier. Well, it becomes a little easier, but it's not, it's still pretty rough going, I would say. But uh, yeah, no, Modern Man in Search of a Soul is just anybody interested in the role the psyche plays in individual health and the health of the society should read this book. Um, should read Jung, any, any of Jung's work, because he really treats the psyche with respect. He really, really does. And man, I wish he were alive today, because that would make a very awesome episode of the Joe Rogan podcast. Um, yeah, my favorite chapter, though, Stages of Life and the role of psychology and literature, psychology and literature, those two chapters are just such extraordinary chapters. If you were just to skip the entire book and just read those two chapters, I would recommend reading just those two chapters alone. Like, pirate the book or something and just read those two chapters because the stages of life it it what Jung does is he instills meaning in every just about every psychic avenue of one's behavior of one's thinking of the imagination he, he does not treat the psyche with frivolousness he doesn't just dismiss it he understands that the role of the psyche of the unconscious and the conscious mind is way more vital to our functioning than we, we even realize. And in psychology and literature, he makes this awesome comparison between the psychological novel and works of fiction that don't market themselves as psychological fictions. Um, and then he uses the example of Moby Dick, which he claimed to be the most important American novel. Moby Dick isn't necessarily a psychological novel. It doesn't claim itself to be that, but he thinks it's rich in psychological content because there's images and symbols that he can deconstruct psychologically, and that's the whale, and that's going the hunt for the whale, and 
being swallowed by the whale that's the unconscious manifesting itself and the exploration of your the things the contents that you've not made conscious and then that's like you know compared to the psychological novel which is like oh look there's this crazy psychotic person who has like schizophrenia and uh oh, it's so psychological and, and creepy and weird Ooh, the mind uh it's it's just uh those novels explain themselves so much that it leaves very little in the room for discovery and interpretation and actual literary merit and meaning so it's just such a kind of a waste of time for the psychologically interested to even engage with those books because it just explains itself so much but uh yeah we have hit the 10 minute mark and i have just finished my coffee so yeah carl young Modern Man in Search of a Soul. Excellent book for anybody who is interested in exploring the work of C.J. Young. Peace. Have a good one.